name's Tell Luca. I am a author. Taught at the Rolf Institute for many years. I don't have a microphone, so let me know if you can't hear me. And I also work, at, I worked for years also as a somatic psychotherapist, and now work more in the realm of organizational consulting and individual professional coaching, too, using a lot of the principles I used for years as a rolfer and body worker. Results. Uh, think for a minute for yourself, if you would, what results you want with the people you work with. What is it that you hope would happen for them as a result of your work? Of course, it's an open agenda. Of course, we're going to allow their process to unfold as it would. But at the same time, you probably are hoping at least it does that. At least there's some sort of result you're hoping for. So if you would, would you take 30 seconds, 30 seconds, and find out what kind of result someone sitting near you is looking for in their work? Go ask somebody else, what kind of results or outcomes are they looking for in the work that they do with other people? Take 30 seconds each and we'll come back in a minute. Go right ahead, please. What are your results you're hoping for or looking for as a result of your work with people? What are one or two things? To feel that they have choices, that they have options. Great. Thank you. Another one, please. Another result we're hoping for as a result of our work. To feel alive. To feel Great. well with themselves. <laughs> All right. Potential. Potential. So we use different methods, yeah, to get these results. For instance, uh, structural integration is a method. There may be individual techniques. Uh, movement work is a method, yeah. And often when we want different results or better results or to go deeper with our clients, we look at changing our methods. We look to go learn a new method or to get better at our methods, yeah, which is important. I love methods. I'm going to teach a workshop in the afternoon about methods to work with the neck. But there's another level there, and that's the level of the practitioner that we are, the person that we are doing the work. Many of the studies to compare different uh, methodologies to see what kind of results they get end up pointing toward the practitioner as the single most important factor in the results we get. In this model, there are experience you can say is composed of three different dimensions, at least three, there's probably more. But these three uh, overlapping dimensions describe our experience as a person, as a client, as a practitioner. The first one is language. Language, you could also say mind or thought. But language in this model is thought to both describe what we uh, experience, but also the language you use shapes our experience. The language you use or hear or experience shapes how we experience things. Well, actually, let's just right here. Let's look at the room for a second. If you just look around at the room and notice some things about the room, now, your experience of the room is, is one thing. Now, if, we had, if I was an architect and I was talking about the structure of the room, the way the, the building is placed and arranged to create a certain ambience, maybe your experience of the room would be a little different. So the language I use as an architect might change your actual experience, as well as describe what the room is like. Another aspect is emotion. And uh, emotion, again, under this model, is defined as a predisposition to action. When we're in a particular emotional state, we're more likely to act in a certain way. Now, again, in this way of thinking, there's always an emotional state. We're always having an emotion. Saying that I'm not emotional is saying like there's no weather today. <laughs> So there's always a state. Even rationality or coolness is an emotion, you could say. And that predisposes me to a certain sort of experience, a certain sort of seeing things, <laughs> as well as the other emotions we usually think of. And then there's the body, which is our physicality, structure, gesture, posture, etc. And our experience as a practitioner, as a person, is both shaped and described and influenced by the physical part of our body. So there are, you could say there are four dispositions here that we could uh, think about the body in. But first, let's do a little bit of movement. I promised a little bit of movement, so let's do that first. So you're going to face your partner, yeah? And then, uh, 
I'm going to get pushed. So Kim is going to, actually, let's try this. Let's try one foot forward, one foot back. It's a very simple push hand. So Kim is going to push on me, and I just respond. Push on me again. He's going to push on me for about uh, a minute. And I just respond. And as the instructions say, I'm not noticing how I adapt, feel, what happens for me physically, maybe emotionally, maybe in terms of language, the other dimensions. And I'm using this as a baseline to notice what changes. Go ahead and one person push, one person respond. I'll tell you when to switch. Just investigating your physical, uh, personal, energetic, structural, functional responses. <laughs> Say one thing about what you noticed about yourself with your partner. Trade one uh, observation about yourself with your partner. For, for example, for example, I uh, when I was talking, I noticed you could push me over easier. Yeah. Share something, share a thought with your partner. This was to help us uh, establish the baseline, like I said, so we can see what happens. Because now we're going to look at each of these four dimensions, uh, or four dispositions, you could say. Stability is the ability to uh, hold one's ground, take a stand, uh, have a a base, and you, I mean, you'll recognize some of these principles, huh? Uh, for sure they appear in other kinds of work. But you could say that uh, stability is related to roots, or your connection to the ground, your ability to uh, stay where you are, as well as support. <laughs> 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 what? Did you want to try that? <laughs> All right. uh, we're going to do it again. Let's move again. Different partner. Different partner. I'll tell you the instructions now and then you can go do it. You're going to get pushed again, but this time resist. Resist. Hold your ground. And study yourself what you have to do in order not to be moved. All right? It's about the same amount of time. New partner. Get pushed. Hold your ground. Yep. Notice what you have to do. Hold your ground. Anything else? Any other questions or comments? Please. She was pushing me from, from behind. Oh, tricky. Tricky. But I trusted her so much, I didn't really mind. Yeah. And I could stay stable. Yeah. Although I, she just did it great. <coughs> yeah. But the trust was there, so I Nice. Trust in her, trust in your own base, more, perhaps. More in her. More in her, all right. That's good. So usefulness, of course, all these things are useful, but stability in particular. Uh, these are just right out of the dictionary, believe it or not. This, if you look up stability in an English dictionary, this is what it says. Mental firmness, ability to maintain balance, reliability, etc. Re ability to resist being influenced or changed, which is sometimes interesting. Huh? And then unintegrated. All these, all these uh, dispositions have both an integrated aspect and an unintegrated aspect. That is, if we have, uh, if we're not so familiar or friendly with the quality of stability then we could be experienced as rigid or stubborn or controlling or heavy, etc. This is like uh, stability out of proportion to my ability to use it. That's it. One more little discussion to have. Where in your life, work, interactions, or body, do you have too much or too little stability? Yeah? 30 seconds each. Same partner, please. Same partner. Next quality. Next disposition. Flexibility. Flexibility. And this is again right from the dictionary. Plasticity, adaptability, springiness, etc. It has this quality of being able to bend, flex, change. 
when we're in a place of flexibility. These are glial cells, which uh, were thought to be just the glue, thus their name, the glue that holds things together, but are turning out to have functions in making connections throughout the brain to be between structures that were thought to be discrete or separate. So they seem to be one of the connecting structures that the brain uses to connect things together. So this ability to make connections, too, is a part of flexibility. With the, as the pusher, you're going to look for places that don't adapt or aren't flexible with your pushing. And then if you're the pushy, the one receiving the push, take your time to let those respond, let those melt or adapt. Okay? 30 seconds each. New partner, please. Go ahead. Anywhere in the body. Anywhere. <laughs> Unintegrated flexibility. Uh, meaning, it's not necessarily, it could be too much, but it could be just uh, not knowing how to use it. Yeah? You could say it would be indecisive, adverse to commitment. Unpredictable, etc. Split two minds. That's all uh, flexibility that I don't know how to use. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now, with your partner, trade ideas about where more or less flexibility would be useful. Where would more or less be useful? In Work, body, life. life. It looks like you found things to talk about, even though the question you had to wonder about. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay to go on. Yeah. Nice. Resolution. Now, if stability was down and uh, flexibility, you could say, is up, resolution is clearly uh, forward. forward. I don't know. And you, here's the, again, the dictionary definition. Ability to take effective action or stay true to a purpose. So the archetypical image, I don't have one, is the archer. Yes. That way. Yeah. Your choice, new or old partner, whichever you choose. And uh, oh, you, you know this one. Most of us know this one, the unbendable arm. Could I demonstrate with you? Would that be okay? I'll show first, then you'll go do it. So there's two stages. Two stages. One is I uh, hold my arm straight with my effort. And then the other is you, you bend it, please. Uh, yeah, you, it's easiest uh, here on your shoulder, and then you can bend my arm. Right. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna hold it straight. Yeah, all right. Then the second, arm straight with resolution. And resolution means I'm forward in my attention. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, for me, I'm reaching out the window. I'm touching uh, whatever's out there, Iceland or something. Yeah, <laughs> good. And then we talk about the difference. That we talk about the difference. <laughs> Very different. Okay. I have a question for you. Excuse me. I have a question for you. How many people felt a difference with uh, resolution? Oh, many. Look at those straight arms. Yeah. <laughs> less with resolution, yeah? Okay. No. I mean, no. Less what? I don't know. Easy. You, most cases, it's harder to bend when there is a sense of resolution in the body. And of course, there's many things we could have resolution about. It could be resolution to hold my arm straight. Or it could be resolution that I'm going to die happy someday. You know, there's all kinds of things we could have resolution about. <coughs> Qualities to this disposition. Here are some of those synonyms. Dedication, commitment, courage. Courage is twice, huh? Unintegrated resolution results to the exclusion <coughs> of all other factors including relationships, health, enjoyment, ruthlessness, heartlessness, uh, yeah. or tunnel vision, Yeah, just seeing the only thing that's in front of you. And with your partner, where in your life do you say one thing and do something else? Because oh. this is... <laughs> This is 
resolution. Yeah? The quality of resolution means that I say what I do, I do what I say. Well, that's for the married people. Are you the Okay. Questions, comments, denials? Anything at this point? All right. Ready for more? Yes. The compliment, of course, to resolution is openness. Yeah. Say? Oh, yeah. And that's ability to receive, being available, being curious. Uh, one more movement. One more movement. Uh, I'll talk you through it. Go ahead and stand up. Same or different partner, your choice. But you're gonna just start here. Make eye contact, please, with the partner. I'll talk you through it. Okay. We'll do this one non-verbally, please. Non-verbally. Sin hablar, por favor. Okay. So eye contact, please, with your partner. Eye contact. Mirar los ojos. And this is again just to notice yourself. What happens in you? What happens in your body, say, or your disposition, your physical disposition? Very good. Okay, and now please, without talking, sin hablar, stand back to back. Como se llama? Espalda para espalda. And uh, continue to feel your body. Continue to feel your body. But now, see if there's anything you can open in yourself. Your breath, for instance. Can your breath be more open? Can your uh, eyes be more open? Softer. And your shoulders, rib cage, pelvic floor. Let your lips part a little bit. Let your mouth be a little bit open. Deja que la, la boca se abre un poquito. Continue to find openness in your body. Really find it. Great. Okay, stay open. Turn to look at your partner. And keep looking for the openness in yourself. Sigue buscando la openness en su propio cuerpo. learning or what might be possible in this state that might, might not have been before. What learning or what change might be possible in this state that might not have been before. Discuss it a little bit. Practicar un poco, por favor, with your partner. Open enough? Great. Yeah. For, I don't know about you, but for me personally, this is the, the, the most powerful practice for me, is to find yeah. openness. Uh, because my habit is to go forward, to resist, so oh, yeah, maybe, but to actually receive is so much more challenging, but also enriches me so much more when I find it, yeah. And states of, of uh, sympathetic activation, you say, whether, you know, it's fight or flight, are not open to something else. They're usually either resolution or retreat or something, but... Uh, the state of being openness, maybe it's less sympathetic. Unintegrated openness, <laughs> being overly swayed, easily influenced, and being so open I don't know where my own stability is, say, or being invasive, uh, crossing people's boundaries without meaning to, just from my own openness, yeah? 
I don't think it's super. All right, so that's our four dispositions in the body. That's the stability, flexibility, resolution, and then openness. Of these four, where, what should you invite into your life, work, interactions, the body? Which one of these four would you actually like to invite more of? Just trade notes, you know, 30 seconds again. Same partner to, fi to finish this up, and then we'll come back together one last time. <laughs> to finish, I found this model really useful in working both with bodies, but also organizations, and also in the coaching work I do with people in their work or in their life. So it's a model of these different physical dispositions or directions. It is a very useful but simple map for understanding the processes going on. Are there any questions or comments here as we wrap up? Thank you, everybody. Thanks for that. Yeah. There are different ways to say yes. Uh, there's a small way. I gotta show these guys. There's a small way, yeah. and there's a big way. <laughs> and we're gonna look at each. So let's start with the small yes. And what I want you to look at is where is the movement? Which joints are moving the most? And it's probably different with each of us. Yeah. yeah? So Nicola, yeah, if we had to build a Nicola and we had to put in a part that moved, it would be something there, yeah? More or less. The most neck movement, could, you could say, is more or less here. Yeah? Yes. Uh, a little different. Yeah, for Matt. Yeah. A little bit higher, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Yeah, I'm sorry, your name again. You told me. Yeah, Edvin. Yeah. Edvin. Yeah. Edvin. Yeah. Edvin. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not in please. And complex. Oh, yeah. 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 There's a little more even higher. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also a place in the middle that's moving. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? That makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So with the big S, we look at the length of the posterior compartment. Yeah? Well, let's go back a step. What did the small yes mean in terms of soft tissue? Which small tissues have to be able to lengthen to allow the I small see, yes to be at the top? Movement. Excuse me? Small core movement. Small core movement, ligaments. Mm -hmm. it, you could say also suboccipitals. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You know, suboccipitals in general. If they're able to lengthen eccentrically, the movement will be higher in the neck. If they're not able to lengthen eccentrically, the movement will be lower. So, uh, like uh, Nicholas here. Yes. Keep that a small yes. So here, he's getting movement low in the neck, but less movement higher. So I would suspect that we're going to find something in the suboccipitals that doesn't allow lengthening. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Big nod. Entire posterior compartment. You could say entire, you know, uh, posterior body, but uh, we'll, cha we'll change. We need you. Uh, we'll change. So all three pieces, big nod. Ah, fantastic. Let's start with that. He clearly gets longer, yeah, in the back. There's a clear lengthening in the posterior compartment. Es claro que se alonga en la, la parte posterior del cuello. Also, also, but a little less. Um, uh, I'm putting my a uh, little slower, please. It's right there. Uh -huh. uh, uncle. So right there, he gets to the limit of the posterior compartment, and from there forward, he's hinging from a lower place. Yeah. So yeah. So there, it's lower. A few more times. Yeah? So he begins by lengthening da, 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 here, and now lower. Da. Yeah. De acuerdo? Sí. ¿Me entienden? Sí. Sí. Empiezan con la parte posterior, pero se alcanza su límite y después se va. 
Nicolás. Parecido. He, de he definitely is lengthening, but he's also using the lower at the same time. Yeah. So, entonces se usa todo. Would you get uh, a partner and look at each other with this in mind? Small nod, big nod. And see if there, where, where you see possible restrictions, and then later we're going to work with it. Mm -hmm. But for now, just get a partner and do this analysis. <laughs> Said he had limited, but I don't know. He's he's moving pretty well. He's got a little bit of uh, you know center movement there, but he's lengthening up top. Yeah, I wouldn't say he's the most limited in the class, but we'll use him. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just comfortable holding in a comfortable way. Yeah, and uh, the purpose here. Like I said, I'm thinking of the vestibular responses, but the purpose here is, is preparation. I'm helping him get settled on the table. I'm gathering information for myself about how he responds. We're getting to know each other a little bit. It's just a way to start uh, the relationship here. But we, I mean, we could spend the rest of the half hour with this one, really. Yeah. So you get the idea. There's a there's a small. Mm -hmm sense you'll have when you get to the places where someone's not able to let go. Yeah. Huh. Cervical wedges, I think it's called. Cervical I am going to repeat my assessment with my hands. Oh, is, would you nod uh, a little bit? Would you say the C? I don't know. No, no, no. no, no, no. So you're going to, uh, you yeah, nod a little bit. It's very small movements. Look for the place where our fingers are. Aunque más pequeño. Still smaller. Si. Un por ciento. Yes. Si. Maybe one percent of what, I have, what you're doing. A very small motion that starts right where my fingers are. Yeah. So he's finding this joint to initiate from. And I'm, I'm just doing that, huh? Mm -hmm. just, where are you thinking? Well, let's say C7, T1, let's say. Somewhere at the base of the neck. Tell us, are you uh, looking for movement at that level, C6, C7? I'm looking for movement. And I'm also looking for his ability to initiate movement there. It's locked up. He's, he's, he's finding that fine uh, initiation right down at that joint. But I had to slow him down, huh? Mm -hmm. I had to uh, take, give him another alternative to the large, gross uh, movement. Now, just given the time we have, I'd say pick a couple of spots. You know, if we had an hour each, we could go through every one of these joints. So there's two patterns. One is that someone can't open it or open somewhere else. The other one is that they can't close it. And most of us have some of both. Like f most of the places we've working so far can't open it's easy. But there's a place higher in his neck that doesn't close as much. And so, uh, so my fingers are pretty dumb, really, is, my, is our conversation that's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's me giving him feedback. Always done. And then I want to make sure that I finish with this topmost joint, the atlas occiput, and see if you can find this on there. Ahora busca este sitio. Los dos cerrar y abrir. Both opening and closing right now. That's clear. Es claro a mí. A ti también. Encuentro el movimiento aquí mismo. Y opening the sunday. Sí, sí. Right. Any questions? I want him to be able to initiate the movement right where my fingers are. So in the case of... So it would be a contraction? It depends. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the places, 
don't open. Mm -hmm. So here it'll be an opening, mm -hmm. an eccentric mm -hmm. response before. Some of the places don't close. So there would be an ability to close. If you think bone is easier. Yeah, it's a facet. Yeah, exactly. So we're looking for bony movement at each level. Yeah? Okay. All right. If you'd like, get a partner, get a table. Try a couple places each. You have time for that. Loretta and I will come around and help you.